Hi guys, it's YF7256 here, back with another What If. Today we are going to be analysing what if Loki had turned good. That's right, we're going to be covering the evil brother of Thor. And even though he kind of turned good towards the end of his life before he was killed by Thanos, we're going to go back a bit earlier in his life. So, let's get started, and as always, be sure to comment, like and subscribe. And click the bell for all notifications. So we begin things. In the original Thor movie, Thor has just been banished to Earth for his arrogance about trying to face off the Ice Demons and the Frost Giants. He is sent to Earth, and Loki is curious about his, his origins. He goes to the casket of Ancient Winters, and he puts his hand on it, and it turns to ice. He wonders, what is going on? Why is he like this? Odin then comes behind him and says, stop. He then puts down the casket and turns to his adopted father. Well, he doesn't know he's adopted yet. He asks, father, why am I like this? He's scared. Loki has never been like this before. He doesn't know what to do. And in this moment, he can only look to his father for advice. You are not from Asgard, Loki. You are adopted. I took another thing from Meldenheim that day. That was you. Loki can't believe this. Why? He thought. Why all these years? No telling him the truth. Why all these lies? You dared to keep this away from me, father. Why did you never tell me? I thought I was being wise. I thought I was good. I thought one day we could unite our people of two kingdoms through two kings, you and four. Or was it because you couldn't accept a frost giant as king of Asgard? In this outverse, Odin falls in shock. He goes into the Odin sleep. Into the Odin sleep. It's been too much. The banishment of four. Loki's outburst. It was too much for him to handle and he fell into his own sleep. Loki rushes to his father. He might be annoyed about not being known, his true origins, but he cared about Odin. After all, if it was for Odin, he'd probably be dead by now. He and Frigga take into his quarters and put into rest. Loki then considers his plan he had originally done in the original timeline by allowing the Frost Giants and Lofi to go through to Asgard in order to try and kill Odin. But he then changes his mind and thinks, No, that isn't right. I am not from that world anymore. He casts himself in his own mind away from Eldenheim and makes himself truly an Asgardian in his own right. He then says to his mother that in Odin's rest, he shall make himself temporary king and watch over Thor whilst he is on Earth. Thor, as in the original, tries to pick up... Nolnir, but he's unsuccessful. Loki then for fun sends the Destroyer down to Earth to see what he can do against Thor. And in this, just like in the original, Thor is made worthy again to reclaim Nolnir and returns to Asgard to confront his brother. He then finds Loki on the throne. Brother, why did you send him? Calm down, brother. I was doing it for my own amusement, says Loki. Calm down, Thor. You're so angry all the time. You'll never be a true king of Asgard at this rate. Thor sighs and simply just agrees with Loki. Where's father? He asks Loki. He's not well, Thor. He's in his old and sleep. He took so long to go through it this time. It might be for a while till he awakens again. Thor is surprised about this. This was all his fault, he realised. He was the one who had been foolish. He bowed from that moment on to never be arrogant again, to try and be a good person so that he could become a good king one day. He then says to Loki, It seems... It seems that I have a long way to go till I can be king, brother. Loki then sniggers. He knew that this was right. Of course Thor wasn't ready to be king yet. But Loki didn't want to be king either. 
I never wanted to be king for. I just wanted to be your brother, he says. After all, this was what the god of mischief only wanted. To have a brother. To be wanted. To be loved. Odin then eventually awakens from his Odin sleep and sees the four and Loki are together once again. They are united with their people. And Thor is then crowned king in this timeline, unlike the original. For Odin feels he might be ready again to take the crown. It is time after all. Odin grows weary and he cannot stay alive forever. Even as guardians don't age that longer than humans. It's a few thousand years, but Odin is catching on in the years. I give to you the crown, my son, and hope you will make as guardians proud and lead us to glory as we once did before. Thor is then crowned king and sits upon the throne. Loki then congratulates Thor as being king, and the two have a conciliation as brothers. They know that they are brothers, and nothing can stand in their way. But then Odin feels like his life is leaving him. He falls to the ground, collapsing. Thor and Loki don't know what to do. They call the guards to aid him. But nothing can be done. It's too late. But Odin doesn't feel worried or panic. He simply is calm, collective, and says to his both sons, Farewell, my sons. I shall see you when you travel to Valhalla one day yourselves. I love you both, my sons. A tear falls from both Loki and Thor's eyes. They weren't ready for this. They couldn't see their father leave just now. Father, please, I'm not ready to leave without you. I only just found out that I am truly one of you, says Loki. Tears are bursting from his eyes. Odin then simply stares at Loki and says, You will do well, my son. I am proud to call you one of my own. He then leaves and travels to Valhalla. But, in the process, Hela is then released from her seal and marches towards Asgard. Well, it seems the father did well with the place, but it's time for me to reclaim my birthright. She then looks at Thor and Loki. So which one of you is Thor, Odin's son? That would be me, says Thor. You don't sound like him. Please, I believe we could come to some agreement, says Loki. He's trying to be composing and trying to compromise with his elder sister. Now you definitely sound like Thor. Thor then slams Norno into, into Hela's face, but it does nothing, and she simply destroys it with ease with a flick of her finger. They then have their battle, just like in Thor Ragnarok, and Thor is beaten down to his life. I will not allow you to rid me of my life, he says. He's struggling for air, but Thor knows he will not give in this easily. He is the god of thunder after all, and he is Asgard's king. He then has his vision of Odin, but much earlier than in the movie. And then he is reminded of his place as king and as the god of thunder. Helada knocks for and says, I am not a queen or a monster. I am the goddess of death, she says proudly with a sneer on her lips. What were you the god of again for? Thor then charges a mighty lightning bolt, the most powerful he's ever done in all of history, in fact. And he says to Hela, I... And Thor, the god of thunder! A mighty thunderclap appears, and a massive bolt of lightning strikes her down where she stands. You think it's over, but it's not. Helden stands back up and applauds Thor for his power. Well done, brother. You even rival father. No, I believe you're no stronger than him. Loki then catches Hela on the wares and stabs her in the back with a dagger. But it's not enough. Wow, I didn't expect that from you, Loki. Please, change your mind, bro sister. This is not right. Father would have not wanted this. Please, we must make this right. Please, I beg you, please stop. 
before it is too late and we destroy Asgard, then nobody will be able to rule. Hela sees sense in what Loki is saying. She then realises this is right and comes up with a compromise. What if we were to work together? We could rule over the Nine Realms, do what Faber originally wanted. Thor and Loki disagree with this. This was not what Faber wanted, says Loki with an evil sneer. He is getting annoyed at Hela now. Yes, they were finally to a degree, but <sighs> Loki was getting annoyed with her. And Thor and Loki then looked at each other and realised what had to be done. They then started a new battle with Hela, and she then realised what needed to be done. She brought out her army of the undead to cast down on Thor, Loki and the rest of the guardians. Thor then says, we have to evacuate. Loki agrees with this, and they both realise that Asgard is not the place, it's its people. They then gather Sephiroth's crown and put it in the eternal flame. But this time, Loki does not take the Tesseract, he leaves it there to be destroyed on Asgard. They then evacuate Asgard, causing most of the Asgardians to flee on a ship, teleporting them to Earth through the Bifrost Bridge. Handel is the last to leave, and Severus then destroys Asgard with her along with it. Thor and Loki look at each other and realise this had to be done. This was the only way to save their people. They then arrive on Earth and give sanction in Norway, creating new Asgard with Thor as their king. The Avengers then meet up with Thor and Loki, and they agree to a compromise that as long as Thor and Loki are peaceful, they will not be dealt with by either the Avengers or the US security of S.H.I.E.L.D. This meant that they could live in peace for now, until one day, a few years pass, and Thanos arrives on Earth, looking for the stones. He knew that one was on Asgard, but he couldn't get to it. He needed the Time Stone. He thought, if he could go back, before Asgard was destroyed, he could take that stone. But he had to go for the others first. And that is where we're going to be leaving things right now, with Thanos arriving on Earth. The Avengers, Loki, Thor, and the Asgardians preparing to make a stand so that he cannot get the stones that are remaining on Earth. And that is where we'll be leaving things for this what if, guys. So, what did you think of this what if of Loki turning good and realising that he and Thor were along the night instead of each other? Realising that the Asgardians came first, not their royalty, not their pride, but the people. And as always, guys, like, comment, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next video. Take care now. Bye.